Welcome back to the wonders of doodling with Dino. This is a part three special edition because we did not think it was going to happen. And so um, what we couldn't finish in two hours, we get another one to finish in. So this is what we, this was the progress from last time. We were pretty much there. A lot of, some people even said it was kind of, it looked like it was done, but we're going to take it to the next level because to me, this does not look done. So let's, an hour, we have an hour on the clock and we're gonna see what we encounter here. There's still a lot of more wonders to talk about and a lot of interesting little techniques that I'll be able to show you to get into. And um, so let's see what we can do here. So I'll start by kind of going around the sky. I think I'm gonna do it a little simple and um, go around all the skies with just some dark blue. Go around all the stars, I mean, with some dark blue. I might maybe I'll actually leave a couple out to maybe make purple. But I'm just going to go around and get rid of that, um, that white space around these stars because they are glowing a little bit. They're creating a little flicker. Whatever those stars are, whether they're gas, planets, spaceships, uh, who knows, monkeys, I don't know what it is, balls of light. It could, it could be anything out there. I've never personally seen a gas star cloud, so I don't 100% trust it until I see it. And I probably won't, so I'm just gonna keep using my imagination here. Maybe there are even diamonds up there, who knows? But, and you can, and that's the thing with art too, is again, you can make stars anything. I have one drawing with stars as a bunch of crystals. I have another drawing with stars as a bunch of uh, lo lotus flowers with gods sitting on them. Um, I have another with stars that are all kind of bubbles with little people inside. You know, anything's possible with art and with the imagination. So what you're going to see in this next hour is a lot of the touching up of details. So different things like this, like things that were a little sh sloppy, I would like to say, um, are going to get touched up and uh, somewhat perfected. And so um, this extra magic hour is going to be able to do a lot. This is, this is perfect. So I hope you're all not bored out there. I'll try to uh, incorporate some topics and things that might be interesting. Uh, let's see here. So now we do the stars. I did most of those blue, but let's take a little purple out for this last one. Oh, this last three on the right side. And we'll use this one. This is a good purple. And so the purple is one of those colors that blends with black in a pretty nice way usually and I can take another kind of purple and pull it even closer but um, and again stars you know sometimes they're they're perfect but a lot of times you look up there and they flicker and you don't know what they really are in shape so if you, if you end up going into the lines it's not always a bad thing sometimes like Bob Ross said little happy mistakes become uh, good things and actually the rushing of this in the last episode kind of led me to a couple ideas that I probably wouldn't have I probably wouldn't have taken, so um, it actually works good. A lot of times you'll think, like, uh, or at the beginning of your art career, you'll think something is a mistake, and you'll get worked up about it, or blah, blah, blah. Something will happen, you'll get stressed about it, and it's really, this, there's not, not stress, stress is not supposed to be a part of the art world, so you kind of come up with methods to just, to get past certain troubling moments, and, and a lot of the, the main things stem from just realizing that, you know, if something happens, and it seems like a mistake at first, chances are it's not. Even that little dot that I, um, that I ended up telling about in my Florida drawing that ruined it, <laughs> it ended up leading to a better, uh, a better creation in the end. Even though it took me an hour to finish to fish something I, didn't, I never thought I would have had to fix, it still, um, you know, that one blemish led to uh, it looking different in a, in, a, in a really cool way. So never kind of uh, get upset with your art and that's another thing, too, is uh, always be proud of your art. I have a lot of, uh, I encounter a lot of students out there, uh, high school and beyond, and um, a lot of times they ha they'll have teachers that will ruin the art experience for them. And it really is mind-boggling to me how anyone could do that. But um, it happens when it, someone tries to kind of ram their opinion of, of art, something universal and uh, infinite, if someone tries to ram their opinion of what art is to them down your throat, and it's, it's not really teaching, it's kind of, uh, it becomes something different. And so I think our teachers should be, uh, should be allowed to, or should be designed and utilized to really strengthen, find out, help kids discover the creativity in their own. And 
one of the best ways to do that is with positive thinking and with good, um, good, you know, background, good thoughts, you know, and positive um, emotional backup and, and all kinds of good stuff, confidence. Art is about kind of discovering yourself and being confident in who you are and figuring out the world around you. And that's, uh, that's something everybody can utilize no matter what age you are. And so we're just going over to this side now of the stars. So this is the fun, this is kind of the fun part, almost at the super fun part. But this is the fun part. We're just kind of going in and uh, touching up these little details. And again, the stars, I can, I can leave some white. I can color some in. Um, it's really up to me. That one's going to turn into a little triangle. See, that was a slight, tiny mess up. I don't know if, you can, if the cameras even can capture this, but these, these are good cameras. So I'm thinking they're doing a great job. And they capture all these little details, the glowing, the color. Some cameras don't capture the color, but these ones are really getting it, which is great. And so up here, kind of touching up this outline of the circle, make it as round as possible. When certain things, um, there's actually, some people make things deliberately a little bit unround, like so not, they're not a perfect circle because our eyes tend to adjust and make things perfect circle, but when things are close to a perfect circle or a perfect circle, they really, it really ends up popping out. And it's kind of one of those things where you can stare at it and let your eyes kind of relax on it for a little bit and then something magic pops out. And if all goes well, um, I would like to show you guys what this looks like spinning at the end. And I have my app with me that's um, usually on the iTunes store, but I have to actually pay to get it re-up. Re I think it's down currently. But I'll show you guys this really cool app that I made. It deals with spinning mandalas and the magic that comes from it. And it's, it's really neat, really educational and a fun, creative thing. But you'll see what this drawing looks like when spinning. And that's when a whole other realm of magic comes out. And it's, um, it's a really cool to look at. And whether it's spinning fast or spinning really slow, it ends up kind of looking cool. And hidden patterns emerge. And it's... Um, kind of a technique based on an old form of animation called phenokistoscopes, where they used to spin circles and then view them through a mirror and through a slitted device that uh, would allow animation to occur. And you can look that up, phenokistoscopes. It's actually the predecessor to modern animation, and it's, um, they used to call them magic wheels. It was like the toy of the, toy of the generation back in the 1800s. And it's, uh, when you compare it to our iPads and stuff now, it's looks pretty insignificant, but the concept of it is really cool. And so I'll show a little bit of that later in the last minute. But let's just keep getting these details. So the stars are all coming. That one I botched a little bit, so we're just going to cover it up. When the star covers it up, you just, or if something messes up, you just shrink it down or just get rid of it and no one will know. Except when it's on camera, like now, then I, I guess people could go back and find out. But at your home, in the privacy of your home, no one will know if you mess up. And there are no such thing as mess ups, so just keep moving on, keep going. All right, that's kind of uh, part of the idea of what I was thinking about doing today. It was uh, the wonders of doodling, kind of in reference and homage to uh, Bob Ross's Joys of Painting. Uh, the wonders of doodling. I remember first, one of the first couple times I saw Bob Ross was in the summer one year when I was really young, and I wasn't really even an artist then. And I was blown away. And I remember I had a, we were, had a pool party scheduled that day at my house in, uh, in Sharon, because I grew up in Sharon. And um, the, everyone was like in the pool, and I was in the, in the house watching Bob Ross, and I could not take my eyes off of the screen and stop watching. It was like a marathon. And I ended up missing half the pool party and just watching Bob Ross paint. And he, the way that he did, uh, the way that he made it seem so effortless and so so awesome and beautiful at the end was just was remarkable to me and his joy that he got while doing it was contagious and it made me um, I was into music at the time but it made me really start to start to think about art another person that did that was Salvador Dali he really once I saw his artwork I uh, my life was changed forever and um, and it's great researching the art masters of the past is one of the best ways to learn about the uh, yourself in the present and because the um, a lot of struggles of artists and scientists and people in the past uh, you can find parallels in your development that uh, will make you kind of put you on the same page with some people from the past that 
you might never expect that you have a lot of similarities in with, but a lot of people that succeed and that we know about went through some struggles, especially artists. Van Gogh never really, uh, never really got to see his talent come to uh, fruition and come to, va- come to be valued. And, um, you know, a lot of artists nowadays, uh, I included, know what that's like. Like, uh, they, I have, you have a value for your art that's one thing. It takes you a amount certain amount of time. And, you know, and some people will come up to you and, and offer you 10 bucks for something that, that may have taken you a couple days or, or, or weeks to do or, or something, which averages out to about 10 cents an hour. But you never know. People, you know, then, then another person could be out there saying, like, oh, my God, I love that. I, need, I want it for thousands of dollars. And so people attribute value differently. But sometimes artists especially don't, uh, don't get their appreciation during their time. But that doesn't, uh, that's not why we do it. That's not, Van Damme didn't, I mean, <laughs> Van, D- Van Gogh didn't create art to become famous and, and whatnot. He just did it because he, he, it was an incredible release for him and it, it made him feel great. And that's why, that's why a lot of people do it and that's, that's why you should try it at first because it will make you feel good. A good thing to share with the younger generation. It's just, it's just great. All right, so we got these little corals. This part is coming done, all right. Some pink over here. And pretty soon we'll start to outline some stuff. Um, I, a little, I did a little rush on the sky earlier, but we're gonna bring that to, we're gonna bring that down to yellow. Hopefully this works. We'll do a light pink and we'll see if we can transition from light pink to uh, kind of a yellowish, kind of glowy haze. I think I have another yellow that might be better. But it's all about kind of knowing your colors and knowing what each color will do. And uh, that comes with just time. A lot of things come with just the time that, you, that it takes to draw. As you figure out more and more things, more and more interesting things start to happen. You become more and more efficient and better at everything you do. Like I, have, like I, was telling, I mentioned that one drawing, the arc that I have, that has 1,250 endangered animals forming a map. And it's about 18 by 32. It's about that big. But it's, um, it took nine and a half months. And it was a lot of research. And it was three years ago that I did it, or three or four years ago. And um, it took that long. It was, and each day was like 10, 15 hours. Some days I had a couple, I had a week that was all 19 hour days of drawing because I wanted to get it done for the summer. And it's a really comprehensive drawing. But it took me nine and a half months back then. And then last week, I did a drawing that's 15 by 17 in less than six days, and it had full-blown research of all animals, and it had 115 animals and plant species on it. And so that was like, in number alone, it's one-tenth of, uh, of the amount that took me, of that drawing that took me nine and a half months, except this drawing took me six days. So that's, come, that's kind of something that's definitely come as time has gone on and as I've become better at plotting designs out um, like I, you might be interested in how I come up with some of these ideas or all the or how I begin in general and it really is just kind of a pencil uh, beginning and, and, and with an idea it all starts and you know you plot the uh, plot the setup of the drawing get it how you want it make sure it's um, you know make sure the, the blessing of an eraser is that you know but we can't erase this ink so if I mess up on this I've just got to go with it but with a pencil you can get things placed exactly how you want it and then uh, Kind of get set it in motion, and then you have a less chance of messing up, or um, just easier. It becomes a lot easier and easier. But as time goes on, you become more and more of a machine, and you'll figure out the techniques that really work. And um, you know, you'll probably invest in markers that really, really work, so you don't have to uh, dilly dally and mess around with ones that don't work. And uh, there's just so many methods that can constantly be increasing your uh, productivity levels. Because you never know what will strike. There's uh, already, uh, so many ideas. This, this idea, actually, um, of doing small doodles like this came from uh, some success. I saw. It came from a few different things. But um, I used to draw a doodle all the time. So it, but I, over time, took them into more serious masterpiece artworks, I call them. But I wanted to come back to the doodle and offer people something that is kind of my specialty. And, I, uh, and at a very affordable price, because instead of doing something that takes me years or months and offering it for thousands of dollars, 
which, which is why I offer prints of everything. But instead of doing that, I wanted to have originals that people could actually, uh, you know, that I'd be willing to part with for, for very lower prices. And that's where these came, these ideas of these neon doodle worlds is what I call them. And then uh, I might even turn them into greeting cards, which is kind of cool. Some of them have animals on them and are really cool greeting cards. But I want to see if I can also somehow show you guys in a black light. I don't know how if that's going to be possible, but this kind of, these colors... If you get them at home, these Sharpie neons and all kinds of different really bright colors and vibrant colors will look great under a uh, neon black light or a spectrum light. They look, it just becomes a whole nother world. It glows. It just looks, looks really cool. So I recommend checking it out. All right. So we've got this outside realm complete. Is this, some of those are a little, uh, those transitions are a little, a little choppy, but... We'll get back to that if we have time. There's more to go to. And, um, and as the drawing comes, you can see it kind of popping more and more. Different kinds of details. The snake. Let's see. We'll make the snake. I want a color that will be a little different from what's over there. So I might make that snake a bluish color. That doesn't seem like too many snakes are blue, which is more reason to do it kind of in this particular setting. If that snake was in this particular orb world, then maybe I'd think differently. But since it's out here in this realm of imagination and magic, we're going to uh, make it a blue snake. This one. All right. And we'll touch that up, maybe add some other light green to it. It's good to mix colors. A lot of people don't realize that ink can be mixed just like a lot of different things. Colors can be mixed. They don't always um, combine in the chemistry kind of way that, um, that oil paints and different acrylic paints will. But the ink does have a, its, its, own type of, um, its own type of blendability and it's it kind of a lighter less severe version of um, of what a paint would do. So that's one of the things. So now I'm going to try and, uh, let's see, let's take a small pen and we're going to outline some of these leaves real quick. Start to go, since we get a lot of the space covered, now we can go around and add the, uh, the precision. And this is the, uh, this is some of the good stuff because you can really kind of get to, uh, you can do a lot of different things. I could even add different patterns amongst these leaves. I'm probably not going to get that intense, but outline some of the roots, the b branches when necessary. Sometimes if they're glowing in the light, they may not need it, but I like to, you know, this, one, this tree looks like it needs to pop out a little more. So we're going to make him, I'm going to give him some defined leaves. All right, and the crystal is still there. The, crystal of the artist, the jewel of creativity, which is shining, been shining this whole time. If you can remember how we started, symbolically we closed in the circle and we had the gem, the jewel right in the middle. It's still kind of the theme of this whole artwork, of the artist, how oh, it's kind of like a treasure, and, uh, or it is a treasure, your own inner creativity, creative path and the wonders that it come with is a treasure. And we're all capable. So here we go. The tree starting to pop a little more. Branches coming out. Still got to maybe add some, add some little marks to it here with this light pen just to kind of give it a little uh, tree, tree look. Just little kind of tick marks. Some are dots. Some are tiny little lines. Just kind of gives it a little feel of being, uh, having some detail. And you'll see shadows. You go into the nature, you see the shadows are everywhere. Shadow, little tiny details of shadows are just in, in everything. Can't escape it. All right. Uh, we'll leave that, make that middle glow a little bit. We won't really put too much there. Maybe we'll add a bird in the last bit. There you go, that crystal. Now we're going to start to outline things a little bit more bold. So this is when things start to kind of pop out a little better, I think. Well, 
And I'll outline some of the circle in black, but I don't want to outline too much of it because I want it to glow. And the, the columns might sometimes have a pattern, but we're not going to really do that this time. Just going to kind of connect it. It's almost, um, I once used to, I used to refer to it as like acupuncture. When um, a body like has its, when acupuncture in theory is supposed to free up energy passages and make things work and connect on a, on a better level. Like can free up blockages, make things kind of flow. And that, I feel, is like what happens as you add more and more details to a drawing. Things start to pop out that you never expect. Things start to um, just kind of appear and really, uh, they crystallize and they materialize in a way that's just so vivid and so powerful, especially if you get rid of all the white space. For some reason, people's eyes can just, they can find white space. Like it's, it's easy to spot kind of something that doesn't belong. And in drawings, a lot of the times, uh, like people will leave some white space in between some of the details, and it's, it clearly doesn't belong. And people's eyes uh, and minds can pick up on that, you know, whether they realize it or not. So it's good to go over your artwork with a fine tooth, uh, fine tooth comb, fine detail, and just um, really get in as much as possible. The details always look really cool. Some and some art is simplistic. Sim simplistic art is, is great, and um, and I love it too. And you can get away with doing a lot minimalist wise, but when doodling, you're kind of really just going uh, you're going free form a lot of times. So you want to just I don't know. I think doodling is about uh, make, making something appear out of just kind of off the top of your head. And uh, it's a good little exercise. It's a great exercise in uh, creativity. And, and uh, freeform thought. A lot of writers will do uh, freeform writing exercises where they'll just write what's off, what comes off the top of their head. This is kind of the uh, equivalent of that, doodling. Um, a lot of people can focus a lot really while doodling. So I used to, um, I used to draw in school all the time, and I would actually pay great attention, and uh, it actually it helped me a lot more than just kind of sitting and listening where it, it enabled me to, I even would sometimes draw things that would be uh, partly related to the teaching or whatever, which would also help kind of ingrain certain ideas into my head that were necessary. But yeah, these pens, these Micron pens are the best. If you are an artist and you're watching this and you haven't gone out and bought a Micron pen by this episode, then just pause now and go out and buy one because they are necessary. It's like painting with a... Uh, with a needle, basically, you have that much control, that much precision, and you can um, you can really do it. And they come in all different sizes, so you can really get whatever you whatever you need and for every different part of your drawing. Some parts you need a bigger marker, other parts you need a really fine. All right, so now we're doing the we're back to the foundation, outlining it a little more, making it pop, making it look like he's in something or that there's a uh, little distance in between this little tower that there's a hole down there. Ooh, thought we had a uh, thought we had an error but we don't. All right, so I'm going to outline him. The uh, he's in and his heart again is the very direct center of this drawing. So which is another interesting thing cuz heart is a big part of art. It uh, has it in it same with the word earth. They all have art within them. And that is very symbolic. A lot of words are symbolic in ways like that because words are an art form as well. And there's a lot of connections you can deduce from different uh, words that have multiple meanings. And just the fact that earth and art are together is, uh, is pretty spectacular, pretty symbolic and meaningful. It should make you ponder. Same with heart. Very important things. I'll have art in the middle. So there we go. We'll get that branch. All right, and we're making good timing. I think we'll definitely be able to finish this within this hour here and get some good details and uh, some good spinning. So this is great. I apologize for talking in the last episode as if it were the last and then coming back with another one, but that's the power of television, the magic of the crew here. So hope you all enjoy this. 
and are encouraged and inspired to go out and create some stuff or research some stuff or look into things in a new way or go into nature and you know I always uh, every time I go into nature I'm always there's been some times when I'm impressed with other people being there but a lot of the times I'm, me and my uh, wife are the only ones in there and, and I'm always like huh people are missing out on this you think the woods would be the woods are so beautiful and so free that you'd think uh, think they'd be packed all the time because they are such a, such a fun experience, but you see a lot of, a lot of times you'll see nice families in there and little kids enjoying the, the the forest and adults and scientists. You never know who you'll meet in the woods. It's always very interesting. But there's a lot more to do in the woods than just get exercise. You can seek enlightenment, find all kinds of cool things. All right. I was originally going to make a pattern there, but I think we, we might save that for the end, or I might just leave it white. I, I kind of like it white. But all right, let's keep going. Let's get some this water. We'll get a little blue detail here. We're going to make this darker right by the crystal, which should make it pop out a little more. It'll make it look kind of like it's uh, hidden, and like that water in the back is a little more deep than the other uh, stuff, which is good. Kind of want that. That crystal is kind of, whether it's growing from the tree or from the center of the earth, we don't really know. We can kind of speculate. But uh, it's up to you, again, to make your interpretation. To me to create this, and then you to get inspired and do more. And let's see. All right, so we got the water. A little bit more touch marks. All right, the sun, I'm going to make the sun like a little bit lighter of a green by the outside realm of that, so it looks like it has a little bit of a glow. And that white in the sun, I, uh, I'm just deciding now, I think I'm going to alternate between yellow and white, so it's not all white. So let's put a little yellow in there. See, sometimes, too, I even will plot um, what I'm thinking while I'm doing something else. That's another technique. So right then I was plotting the, the use of a yellow. And uh, while not even doing it, it saves time. And also uh, getting like print, plot, plotting colors even sometimes, like you, just so you know. You can, sometimes I'll even be drawing and I'll look up and I'll find the next color so that I don't have to waste any time looking for the next color. <laughs> All kinds of ways to just save time and increase productivity. And you'll, everybody's got their own methods. Every time I teach someone, whether they're in high school or middle school or elementary school, they always have their own methods of doing things, and they always work great. And so I always tell people, you know, find what works best for you, and and uh, you know, if it works and you accomplish the goal set out, then then don't change it because everybody's got a unique technique. Sometimes uh, teachers will guide you in the right directions, but sometimes they can uh, they can steer you astray if you uh, if they force you to adapt a type of technique that you don't really uh, you don't really that doesn't flow with you. So. It's always good to try different things and um, go with what feels best. And you'll know what feels best because it won't be stressful. It will be very, uh, it'll feel great. Like art. Art should always feel great. Like I've been doing, we've been doing this all day today, but I'm going to go home and draw some more after this. And, uh, you know, one of the worst parts, I guess, of being an artist in my mind is, is having to uh, navigate the social media realms to try and spread your art. Because that's something that not many, uh, not personally me, I don't like doing. I'd rather be drawing than doing any of that stuff. And so, uh, but sometimes you need to, you need to do that because you need to spread your craft to the world. And if you have visions that you want the world to see, then you got to figure out how to do it. And there's a lot of different ways, but um, it's it's very important. Sometimes it'll spread naturally. Sometimes you gotta you gotta put in a lot of work. All right. Here we go, little touch-ups. Now this guy at the top, I gotta, we gotta do a, a little magic on him because he's too important to kind of just have surrounded with just some simple light. So I want to get some other kind of colors around him, maybe some dots. Pointillism is a, a technique that I sometimes will use and um, you know a lot of different techniques will come kind of in, in in your drawing and there's certain places for everything that's why a lot of in painting a lot of people have different brushes that 
have different effects. You want to be able to have as many little techniques in your artist skill toolbox as, uh, as possible. And so, you know, sometimes working with dots is a really great thing. And uh, it's an old technique. George Surratt used to use it. He's got some famous ones that I'm sure some of you out there have seen. But let's get, do a little, uh, we're going to maybe put some dots of some color in there, maybe some lines just to make some kind of star or power emanating from this being up here who's at the top, at the pinnacle, at the zenith of the drawing. And he's almost in a loose kind of orb as well, but his own little power orb, which is, uh, you never know. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Just kind of fading in some of those colors. Blending. Always blend as much as you can until you get the color that you need. And sometimes, like this one, like a lot of, a lot of times, a lot of colors will build as you go on. And um, so, like the color that you first put out, the first single layer of color is like, sometimes it won't even look anything like the color of the marker. But as you add more layers to it, it, um, it becomes the color you want. So it's, layers are definitely important. And they can help erase little marks that may look clearly like a drawing mark. That's, that's one goal too is at the end, if all goes well, it should, you shouldn't be able to, uh, people will know it's a drawing because it's clearly a drawing, but you don't want people to be able to see like pencil marks and different, um, different things that clear brush, uh, pen strokes that make it obvious that it's a, uh, it's a drawing. You want to convince them that it's a vision of some sort that's just, uh, just awesome. Crystal clear and really nice. All right. All right, now let's get a little. Sometimes you really, like right there, I'm really jabbing that, digging that color in because it's just got to get there. And it's some colors, some inks are tougher to go over on other ones. So you never, you got to sometimes bear down harder than others. But this Bristol paper, like I said, is really good and can take a, can take a beating. So you can really kind of wear down on it. All right, now let's make, uh, just make some lines, some emanating lines coming from them. Maybe kind of in a pattern, almost like a, at the hands of a clock or at the hour marks of a clock. Start there. We'll do it. Oh, I had some blue. Kind of this is the, the radiant coming from him, the light, kind of the power the uh, essence, the whatever of this guy. And then maybe add some pink in there, maybe some other colors that are just kind of add to the feeling of it. When it's something like this that really can't be described, you know, you can put as many colors in as you want and just have it look like, have it kind of look cool. And again, once you've got the idea in your head, you can really, uh, you can really go off on a lot of these things. Uh, there we go. It was kind of just a little blast of, of energy, basically. And this guy up at the top. All right, maybe put a little. So it's a little bit chaos, but also looks kind of interesting. All right. All right, going around, let's get a little bit of this color by the angel. I'm going to preserve some of that hair. Also make the detail on some of that hair. So maybe we get the face. And then just hair kind of going with a gold outlay, but not a total gold. Go over some of these rainbow lines to make them pop. Oh, there we go. The paintbrush, her paintbrush needs a color. The orange, yeah, brown, oh, we'll do black. The handle. And again, these details, uh, some of these details won't be picked up by, uh, by really any camera, but you're, like, I can see, I can zoom my eyes in on some of these little dots. And they're, they're really like certain lights will sometimes expose different, light, uh, different areas, vulnerabilities in your artwork. So you never really, um, always, I always do kind of look at artwork in, in different lights sometimes because you can sometimes see things that you wouldn't know. 
and the test is kind of if it all, if like in all different lightings, if it always looks good, it, it, you know. And when, my, and when a drawing kind of is finished, it, it has like a, it almost pulses and like resonates. Like it comes, I think it becomes alive and, or in some form of way, not, not technically, but it, um, it, it almost takes on some kind of thing. And, it, and it, it really, I don't know, it's very interesting. But when a drawing is fully complete, it, it's almost as if the drawing knows it's complete. And, uh, and it's very interesting. One of the magics uh, that you'll notice and won't be able to explain as you continue your art path, which there are a lot of things like that that you'll come into that you may not be able to explain or, or know how you, you might do something and not know how you did it. And, but you'll figure it out. Reverse engineer what happened every time something like that happens and then figure it out. You've got plenty of time and you'll never be bored again after this because you're all going to be doodling pros. All right. There we go. And whenever you need a circle, I definitely encourage you. I think you, like I said before, get a stencil. Sometimes they have stencils that have a lot of different circle shapes. Those are very helpful. Protractors are good. Different compasses are good. If you find one that works, a lot of compasses are made very cheap. Those ones where you anchor it and spin it around. Try to find one that's good. It'll save you a lot of effort. And, but stencils are really key too because you can just kind of take the shape. Or if you're in a place you know, where you have a cup even, plates. I, I've used anything, everything possible to, um, to use for shapes, whatever you need to. Use any resource at your disposal at any time. There we go. So we're closing off this loop at the bottom. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, but I decided I think I do. So we want to separate it. And I also want to make those roots come out a little tiny bit more. All right. We're almost there. Mm -mm. And this little guy down here, he's still there. He's still drawing. He's searching for a way. And the path of the artist, man, this is this, that's what the theme of this art, artwork is. And um, it is an interesting path. And you're, it's good for artwork to have theme and meaning. Like ma many, the artwork is, the art world is divided into uh, many different parts, but there's one way of separating it is art with meaning and then art that's just kind of there for, uh, for design or just not really too much meaning. But I always personally am drawn to art that's poetic in some form or has certain symbolic meaning or I mean symbols have been an ancient part of our universe throughout the dawn of time some of the most ancient symbols now have taken on a lot of different meaning over time like the the peace symbol that we know of as and see is actually inverted from the way it used to be in the ancient times it used to be a tree of life and be this way you know? But now, uh, in our, our modern times, they've changed it. So symbols have changed over time. Some symbols that were beautiful to ancient cultures are, are, are evil now, are considered evil. And the cert, even the shape of the, uh, the penta pentagon, pentagram, has taken on evil connotations in, in, in recent time. And, uh, and I personally disagree with, with a lot of that because uh, they're symbols. And it all really, like we said, comes in, in contact with intention. If someone's drawing an evil symbol uh, for evil intents and purposes, then uh, you can tell, you can feel it. But when someone draws something that's a symbol that some people think is evil and it's a beautiful, gives you a beautiful feeling, then it's, it's, uh, it's not so cut and dry. So the spiral and the pentagram and the star are kind of those symbols that have kind of been taken over by some negative forces. And uh, I don't think that's right. I think art is... Uh, Art is neutral, and especially sacred shapes are, they, I think they're all good, and good power. And geometry and math, I, when I was studying them in, in high school and stuff, I didn't have much interest, but as I came to, uh, to realize and learn more about math and art, I, I, math took on a whole new meaning, and I wish I had been taught about it in, in, co in high school and, or in college, but... It was, uh, just didn't fit the curriculum then, but when I started self-teaching, and as you artists will all do, self-learning and, and uh, finding different avenues, you'll discover a lot of different things that you can utilize. And 
There's a lot of information and a lot of stories to hear and information to soak in and utilize. And especially nowadays with online, there's so many different styles of art and different techniques, different trends that pop up and, and come and go. And uh, you know, some waste a ton of paint or a ton of ink. And uh, some utilize it really well. It's, there's, there's a lot of different, a lot of different methods to art, and uh, everyone should be encouraged to discover their art form. It's very important. All right, still going here. One of the, um, let's see, we'll touch up a little bit of these areas just because I see it. Um, one area that I'm going to get to at one point is going to be the uh, spiral up top here. That might be one of the next zones to conquer. And I've got some smudges in a couple spots here. Usually I would uh, cover those up, but I don't really, I think they're okay for now. Sometimes one thing too that you want to watch out when you're smudging with the yellow a lot is that sometimes, depending on what color you smudged before, you can pick up a little bit of that color, traces of it, and bring it to your next spot. So I always kind of will do that in order to um, kind of clear off the brush tip, which is a good idea because you never, you don't want to, you don't want to accidentally get a, some random color and a big bold mark in a spot that you don't want it. So it's always good to have a sheet of uh, paper next to you to test out your stuff and make sure that it's going to work as you would like it to work. Otherwise you end up with a mistake and then it's just going to take more time. And uh, Time is your friend. Valuing time, or I mean, time is a very important thing, and a lot of people say time is money, but I don't know about that. At a time, I think time is even more important than money. You never know when it's going to run out, and uh, you can't take money with you, so use your time wisely. And being creative is a fun, fun way to do it. By the end of this three hour period, this three period, uh, this, these three drawing sessions, We'll have something in the world that would have never been created otherwise. And so that's pretty cool. And it will probably be available at Patriot's Place Gallery if anyone likes it. <laughs> I don't know how much it'll be, but probably not much. If you say that you saw this episode and you really want it, then let me know. Because that would be kind of cool. I'm curious to see how many people see this and if people like it. Because I had fun doing it and I like talking like this. It's very interesting. You never know what's going to come up, and there's infinite, every single drawing I do is different, so there's so many different topics that, that span the art world, and so many different reasons to draw, and uh, everybody should do it. I'm even working on a uh, graphic novel with a friend of mine from Aruba, who uh, I've known for so many years, and we've joined forces, and now art is bridging a gap that's thousands of miles, and... We're uh, going back and forth and creating this cool graphic novel. So you can really, art is, a, art is just a great way to bridge the gap to meeting a bunch of people and creating uh, a different, uh, just creating new things. The world needs it. So there's a lot of, uh, there's so much stuff out there. To, even though the art world has been around and been a dominant force in, in the universe for a long time, there's still uh, no, more and more things that, new techniques that get discovered or new ideas that new visions that get brought up like daily or created daily and you know and you never know you, where you might meet an artist a lot of artists are hiding away some are reclusive some are more uh, prolific and outgoing than others but artists are a, are a very interesting breed that span a lot of span a lot of possibilities and all over the world really there's nothing like art because everywhere you go, you will see it. It's so good. All right. Let's see. So we're making this. I'm just adding some details to the spiral here, adding some extra color. Sometimes in zones like this, it's like the more, uh, the more color you get, the more interesting kind of stuff pops out. And um, things like a spiral, too, like are, are areas where I wouldn't, like things like this. It's like a galactic spiral. It's not necessarily an area where I would go with, take my um, fine tip black pen and um, carve out the details. So it's more along those ones where it's just going to kind of stay as a uh, slightly vivid, kind of pastel-y 
kind of just intricate little zone of, of chaos and mystery here. Might add a couple little lines, but that's about it. Like this one. Pop that ring out. All right. We are getting down towards the end, and this is great. This extra hour, I'm glad we had this third episode. This allows for the completion of this idea and kind of the tying up of a lot of these concepts. And so this is, uh, this is working out great. Still, if I were to, um, there may be some little tiny details that I'll add inevitably before it gets, uh, before I put a frame on it and offer it to the public. But um, for the most part, this, you are going to see a completed drawing here in 10 minutes or less, by 15 minutes. Which isn't less than 10, but I'm going. <laughs> All right. And some of, so now I'm just kind of taking in the details, certain things, making them a little rounder, or increasing the glow. There's a couple spots here, some darker areas that I need to blend in with the lighter ones. I didn't get the angel to glow, but she's bringing light to the place. I was another thing I was going to instill was sound. So I was going to have another, if I, had a, if I had room for another goddess or another muse, I would have put the uh, sound in there, maybe an instrument, because that's another creative, creative force of this, this world that is very, very necessary and nice and important. Boo -boo. And certain music can pull great ideas out of you, too. You never know. I sometimes will listen to classical music and just be really at peace, but I'm a... Uh, I'm a heavy metal guy at heart, and I was, uh, I've just always loved heavy metal and really guitar-oriented rock music that's really powerful. So sometimes I'll be drawing and I'll be headbanging and I'll be singing and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a very varied kind of uh, experience of drawing. Oh, that color was a little darker than I wanted, but I'll show you what happens there. We'll just kind of smooth it out, make it blend in. Nobody will ever know that was an accident. And it actually kind of turned out better. I like it. All right, one more pen. Uh, this might work. All right. All right, so there we go. I took that. That was kind of the wrong color before, but problem solved in less than 15 seconds. There's always a way, and the more problem solving you do, the more you'll easily be able to figure it out and the less upset you'll get. Because you don't want to get upset, like I said, again, with art. You want to keep it stress-free and beautiful. A beautiful, sacred, holy experience. It's kind of like when they see those artists in the cave. They, they find all these cave drawings back in the day. And the first thing I think is um, what was going through those people's heads? What was happening in their lives that they were led to a cave by firelight or something to draw those those images of the animals, of, you know, of everything. What inspires the artist? It's really, it's an amazing question to ask, and you'll discover it within yourself, and you'll discover your connection to those uh, ancient, ancient people, from the Renaissance to the, the cave dwellers. They all, we all share a common bond in uh, being alive in this planet and um, being fortunate enough to be able to create art, which is amazing. You know, they were in those caves creating with smoke and ash. And, you know, there's artists out there, a guy named Andy Goldsworthy, who creates art with um, sticks and trees and leaves and different things. He's called a land artist. And, you know, that's, you don't even need to go out to the store. You can go in the woods and find a bunch of different colored leaves and arrange them in a beautiful pattern. Find some rocks and create a mosaic. Dude, there's so many different possibilities out there to creatively express yourself and... Everybody should be encouraged to do so. And uh, the path of the artist will, will keep you guessing every step of the way. I've had so many, I can't even explain to you. The, I'd need another three-hour session to explain to you all the times that I've had my hopes up and been like, oh, yes, this person's going to save my art career, or blah, blah, blah. This, this is a perfect path, and then it gets destroyed. Within, within weeks, months, however long it takes, it's, it's just... A lot of, uh, it's just not an easy path, but it is a, it is a beautiful one when you're guided with uh, the right values and um, the right intentions again. But you will encounter some people that will disrespect you, 
and you will encounter people that will glorify you. And they are all part of this. It's all part of the same plan, and it's all to be used towards motivation. I call it fuel. When someone, whether it's a, uh, a family member or someone you don't even know, just kind of insults your path or whatever, you use it as fuel or, or tells you you can't do something, you just get fired up, immediately turn it into uh, to something that keeps it going and keeps, uh, keeps the, the, ho- the, the feeling of, of greatness alive. And you know, the, you're going to just, if you, if you want something bad enough, you got to just keep doing it and with art, never give up. So we are down to the last five minutes, and that is perfect timing. I'm going to give this, um, I could add a little more here. I never got to add the flowers. Maybe I'll add, uh, let me do one thing real quick. Do this real, I'm just going to outline these roots real quick, real loosely, just so they're there. The roots that, again, go off the page, so you never know. So it's like, where do these artistic roots from this tree with the crystal come from? They come from off this page in some distant realm of, of the universe that we don't really know about. And they go on forever. These roots, maybe they're buried in something. Maybe there's a fruit down there. You never know. All left to the imagination. So this is the end here. Uh, I do want to get one flower just real quick. Let's get a little, kind of a little petaled flower. Get him in there on that side. Get one on this side, too. Uh, we'll do a little spirally kind of one. We'll leave him orange. We'll leave that other one yellow with the green center. I'm going to add some more just grass real quick. And again, I, if I were going to do it a little more, I would go over some of these lines, make them a little more bold, and um, that's what will be done. So here we go. This is the completed artwork. Uh, so now, now I'd come up with a name to think of it. We'll call it um, uh, Mandala Dome. Man, no, no, Mandala. Let's see. I'm trying to think of what will pop in my head. Um, or maybe call it Wonder World just because we're doing the wonders of doodling. So, yeah, we'll call this Wonder World because we all have to wonder about the world and it's good to wonder about the world. It's, it's not always good to just believe what you're told. It's great to wonder. Keep the imagination going. If something interests you, really uh, delve into it. All right, here we go. The, actually, I'll put it up here. So here is the pretty much 95% completed artwork of Wonder World. It's been fun. We were, it was a great ink. I used Sharpies and on Bristol paper, remember? And if you have any doodles, my, uh, feel free to send them to me. I would love to see them. I love seeing people's artwork. It's, it's great. Email me at dinodenap at aol.com. All that information, artofdino.com, is all going to be in, on this, um, in the following credits. I even have a charity that's dedicated to raising money and bringing art, education, and magic to the world. It's called Save Earth does things for raising money for sanctuaries, coral.org, the, the ways of bringing uh, attention to earth causes that really need it and using art to do that. So uh, check it out, saveearth.us. Thank you all so much for allowing me to do this. Foxborough, I can't thank you enough. Neil, Pete, thank you guys so much. This has been a great experience, and um, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Doodle. But wait, 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 there's more. I just wanted to show you, and I remembered I told you about the Mandala Magic app that I have. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like spinning. So very, a very important thing for me is spinning mandalas. I, used to, I usually hang them above my ceiling and spin them above my bed, and that's the best. But when you can't do that, online is a great way to do it. And so this app will take that drawing, and it spins like this very slowly, so you can't really see much, but then as it spins, you can change up, adjust the speed, see what it looks like as it spins, and then we'll get to the super speed, then I'll zoom in. See, sometimes it looks really cool. Sometimes it looks really cool when it's slow in reality. It looks like a face almost in between. It's sometimes different patterns will form. As it gets faster, it gets a little more intense. Super fast, but then I'm gonna go to the super speed right here. This is a really cool one. And then to end it, thank you all again. Wonders of doodling. Here we go. Let's zoom in on this. And there we go.
a star in the center, Mandala magic. Wonders of doodling. Thank you so much.